Yo, what's going on, guys? Jack here from On The Spot Sports, and I'm along with... Tyler from On The Spot Sports. And today, we have a very special episode, as we're going to be discussing the 2020 NFL Draft. That's happening uh, on Thursday. So, before we get to that, how have you been, Tyler? I'm doing all right. Um, I'm pretty sure, like most of you guys, uh, I just got finished watching the first two episodes of the Michael Jordan documentary, or I should say the 97-98 Bulls documentary surrounding Michael Jordan called The Last Dance. Everything that I could possibly anticipate and more, I loved it. So right now I'm in, I'm in a pretty good mood. Uh, but other than that, it's been pretty dry, as most of you, I think, would probably say too during this quarantine. So that's good. It's keeping me up. I can't wait for next Sunday, though. Yeah, I can't wait either. I just got, I just finished watching it like you, and it's probably one of my favorite documentaries I've ever seen. And it's only two episodes in out of the 10 series. Yeah, two, two out of 10. Like, there's going to be so much more info. Like, if you think people are unloading right now, like, there is so much more background information. There is more of that season that we have yet to see. There are, I've, I've seen some stuff, and it's like there was this article, I think it was Jackie McMullen on ESPN. She she wrote, the Michael Jordan I knew was about to be revealed to the world. And I'm like, I don't know if that's going to be good or bad, but we'll just see. But all I know is, is he has that competitive fighting spirit. Like, I have seen few athletes ever have. I think the other one that I can really closely relate to is Tom Brady. But that guy, man, win, win, win. That's all he cares about. Killer instinct to win. That's all he wanted to do. Yeah. Which, which is really big, especially for um, since like he was with the night with the nineties Bulls, and, like how they won five, six championships during that time. It was really insane. Like that that whole mindset was there for the whole team all the way through, which was insane. Yeah, and he really sparked that in them, in them, and I again way before our time, I didn't even really know um, the Bulls were, like, nothing. Like, they – as a franchise before they drafted Michael Jordan, they were in such a bad state. Like, there was the, – the, the Cubs were more relevant than them. Even the, the Sox and, and the Hawks were more relevant than them. It, it was crazy. And those teams were already in long droughts as it is. Like, the, the Blackhawks were nearing, I think, 20 years. The Cubs were about 80 – almost 80 socks are about 70 and this team was what the least relevant out of all of them so that just speaks to you how they were not in a good spot at all and once once he came there it's like holy cow this kid is something else and I remember they said you nailed this draft man we got someone really special so I can't wait for the, I cannot wait for next Sunday I know right and now it's gonna take forever to come yeah, and Jordan, as much as he – that's all he wanted to do. He wanted to win, but he also wanted to be the best player that was on the court, like, yeah. all, every single time he stepped on, which I think that's it's empowering because you want to – if you want to succeed, you got to be the best. you got you got to do whatever it takes to, to, like, get over that – the next step above someone else. Yeah, I agree. I, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, so enough with the Jordan talk. You want to start focusing on the NFL draft? Yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. So um, you can uh, describe what we're going to be doing because I know you had you had an idea that you wanted to do do something like this for this interview for this podcast episode. Yeah, sure. So as you guys probably already know, the NFL draft is scheduled for as usual seven rounds. Uh, Thursday marks the beginning of the draft. Uh, just round one is being held on Thursday because the round one is – or the first round, I'm sorry, is, is always the big buildup. You know, it takes more time to analyze these picks and whatnot. So round one is on Thursday. Uh, rounds two and three are on Friday. That goes a little bit quicker. And then rounds um, four through seven will take place on Saturday. Um, and so this, I love – seeing what where other guys go with that other than first round pick but I, I think we all know most people pay attention to the draft in the first round we'll lose a little bit of touch after that so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the first round and we're going to just see you know like what what each team is possibly going to do with that pick 
uh, and any other player that we might want to talk about or mention as well in this draft class, we're going to bring them up as well. Anyone again. So I'm looking forward to it. There's, this draft is going to be wild. And I got to say, I did a mock draft about a couple of weeks ago. I, it, mine's going to be far off from what this actual draft is going to look like. I haven't looked at, I haven't looked at my mock draft probably in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, I don't even want to look now. It's going to be pretty different. So that just goes to tell you how this, this draft class is. It's loaded, and I can't wait to break it down. I know. It's going to be, it's going to be a fun one. What a way to kick off episode 40. Yeah, I, that's crazy. 40, 40 episodes already that we've been doing this, and no plans on stopping anytime soon. Never. No, we're just getting started. Yes, sir. So uh, let's, let's get into this then. So um, do you want to start or do you want me to? Actually, you could start because you start. You came up with, uh, with the idea. All right, yeah. So, um, again, feel free uh, to interject, Jack and myself included, if we think of a player that's in this draft that we might want to talk about. Um, feel free to interject. But we're, like I said, we're going down on the board uh, for just analyzing each pick, you know, what, what they might do. Uh, so, starting off, I believe we all know what, what's coming on this one. Number one. Uh, posting a record of two and fourteen in the regular season, the Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. And I'll just go and start by saying this is probably going to be the easiest decision of this draft. Number one is usually pretty decisive, you know, pretty uh, pretty clear cut most of the time. Um, I would be absolutely shocked if the Bengals traded this pick. Um, I actually think it would be pretty foolish if they did. And the guy that everyone knows is there; he's going to get drafted too. Well, None other than LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. That is my that's my prediction at least for that number one spot. And a lot of people I think are kind of taking this. I, I kind of had to take a step back. I'm like, I still have no doubt that the Bengals are going to pick Burrow at quarterback. But also remember that Andy Dalton is still on the Bengals. He did not get shipped out and he did not get released. He is still on his team. So with the Bengals taking Burrow here, what does his future look like? Is he going to be a mentor? Is he, is he going to be somebody that's competing? Or is he going to be shipped out of town later? And I saw something from Dalton that said, there was a scenario where I might stay. There's a scenario where I might go. We'll see. Even he knows pretty much what's going on over here. So, I, again, I would be blindsided if the Bengals traded away this pick. Joe Burrow at number one. A record-setting season. National champion. Ohio native, what more can you say to try and revamp this franchise? Number one overall, Joe Burrow. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better. I believe this is, like you said, the easiest pick of the draft that we could pick. And for me, Bengals select uh, LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. And what a year! What a year he's had. Record, like you said, record-setting uh, national championship. Heisman Trophy. Got to throw that in there too. Me too. Everything was going right for this guy, and I believe the Bengals need a new start. So I think with Burroughs coming, he'll he'll definitely make a make a name for himself there. And going for the Andy Dalton thing, I think they're going to use Dalton as a mentor, just because he's been in the league for a while now, and he knows the ups and downs of professional football, like being a prof- profession, being an actual professional. So I think he's going to be a mentor there and help push Joe Burrow to the best professional football player that he could be. Yeah. And I, I agree with you there. I think it, his situation is very, very interesting. If he would go to another team though, I do not believe he'd be a starter unless it's only two teams, the new England Patriots and the Los Angeles chargers. The Chargers are very unlikely. I do not see him going to the Chargers. The Patriots, I could still see, but I don't think it's that might happen. But the big thing is, though, what you said about Dalton, about the whole mentor thing, I 100% agree with that. Will he be the starter right away, or will second-year head coach Zach Taylor want to push the issue and make this an open competition? That's, what, what that's my think, biggest takeaway. What do you think about that? Will he be, will he be a starter right from the start, or – do you, or do you think he won't be? I can honestly say that if the, if the Bengals really believe in this guy, they really believe in Burrow, 
They want him to have the best possible chance to succeed. I think you give the tools to Dalton right now. You let Burrow kind of just see what he's got, you know, evaluate this offense, you know, learn from him. And you know what? Do the same thing uh, last year. Not necessarily like the Jacksonville Jaguars kind of did. Or, no, I'm sorry, the New York Giants did. Um, have, him, have him sit behind Dalton if they start not playing good, which most people highly anticipate they will not be a top contending team. Um, then you then you hand it over. Yeah. I think that's the best possible option. I think if if they want him to succeed the most, I think he's got to sit behind Dalton for I don't know how much time, but yeah, I I 100 percent agree with you there. I I think Dalton's going to take take the ring and uh, for the start of the season, and then once he gets like used to like being a professional and being like at the NFL level, I think depending on how they're doing, which Honestly, most likely they won't be doing that well, but I don't want to say anything like that. But if that does happen, then I think Burrow could come in and just for experience, even for just for a few games in the year, just for that experience to help him next year. Because we have no idea where Dolan's going to be after next year. So, yeah. so maybe they'll, they'll trade him or he'll assign somewhere else to retire. And then Burrow has a has a start. Yeah, it's an interesting scenario for sure. Yeah, so you want to go to round two now or pick two? Yeah, sure. That is being held by the Washington Redskins. Uh, they did not have a great regular season, obviously. Uh, they fired their head coach, Jay Gruden. Uh, they hired – Riverboat Ron Rivera, I really like the hire by the Redskins. I, he did a great job turning the Panthers around. Almost led them to a Super Bowl title with uh, Cam Newton um, at the helm. Uh, I really like the hire. I think I honestly think the Redskins are going to be contenders in that division in the next couple of years to come. I think it's, again, got to take time. Uh, the NFC East was easily the worst division in football last year, so I think it's almost anyone's game. Not this year, though. Um, but number two. I was really, really debating on the Redskins taking quarterback because I'll be honest, I don't know how much trust Ron Rivera has in Dwayne Haskins. I was not sold on Dwayne Haskins last year. I don't think he's going to be that great of a pro. Um, so I don't – if a lot of other people didn't like Haskins, I don't think Rivera will have the greatest, I guess, uh, trust in him. So I don't think Rivera – necessarily likes Haskins. I believe that's why they traded for Kyle Allen, the Panthers uh, guy last year who started 12 games. He knows Rivera's offense well. Um, but with this number two pick, I don't think they're going to go quarterback. I really thought they would snag Tua, but I, with his injury issues and them not being able to check his medical records, there is no other way the Redskins are going to go with this pick and not select Ohio State product Chase Young. Uh, he had a monster season last year. I believe it was I, – I, correct me if I'm wrong – 14 and a half sacks. I think more Six, he broke – 16 and a half. 16 and a half, yeah. Broke a school record. I do know that. Uh, he was a monster for them last year. And Rivera coming from uh, – he played defense for the Chicago Bears on that phenomenal 85 Bears team, uh, defensive-minded head coach. What more can you say? Bol bolster that defensive lineup even more. And the Redskins, honestly, have one of the most underrated defensive lines. Like, they were not good last year, but they have some real talent on that defensive line. Uh, Jonathan Allen, Matthew Ioannidis, Ryan Kerrigan, and put Chase Young on there. That might be a really, really interesting defense. Um, but I think the Redskins are going to go Chase Young there. I think Rivera might settle for Allen this year, maybe Haskins. That's, that's for next year, at least. But Chase Young. You, you you can't pass on them more than once or twice. Yeah, for sure. And for the first, like, half of this this draft, I'm pretty sure we'll be pretty close to, like, who we're picking for both, for each team. Yeah. It's most likely going to be the same. But for this, especially for this one, I think the Washington Redskins, are, with the second pick in the draft, are going to choose uh, Ohio State, Chase Young. Like, he, he had a – he's – He's had a he had a really good year last year, and he he's a very athletic person, and he has like amazing instincts during like during during the actual season. So I think he'll be in, in like sixteen and a half sacks in only twelve games. 
during uh, his last year at Ohio State. So I believe he'll he'll definitely be a game changer for uh, for the Redskins. Yeah, I agree. I, like I said, I think it'd be, it'd be pretty foolish for them not to pass on them. Put him next to some guys with a couple years' experience. The Redskins' defensive line is going to be pretty, pretty uh, heavy to watch out for. Like I said, you got those three guys and then Chase Young. He's going to be loaded. He's going. He is definitely going to be loaded. At this point, it honestly, if as long as you have like a good like veteran presence and like guys to thrive under, I think I think a lot of these players are going to turn out really good, especially if they have those that presence and just being a mentor off of off of the older guys, it'll it'll definitely help them in the long run. Absolutely. And and I'm not just saying this because I've done a lot of research and reading on this draft class because I understand a lot more, but I really think this is a very talented draft class. Like there are a lot most of these guys on here I think like they they are going to make immediate impacts on these teams. Like a lot of these guys they might be sitting behind and waiting, but I think a lot of these guys, especially these first rounders, they're going to see the field like starting, and they're going to have huge impacts on these on these teams. Yeah, very yeah. very uh, highly regarded draft class. This is going to be, and I I hundred percent agree. Uh, if you if you go in with that right mentality and, and coaching, I cannot ignore that. If you got the right coaching staff, you are going to succeed. Just get them in that the right organization, the right fit, and bam, there we go. It's off from there. Yeah. And that's that's really all you can say. You gotta have good good mentors, good coaching staff, and as long as you have that right mentality, you're you're gonna you're gonna get through through the league. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going on to pick number three, Detroit Lions. So I'll, I'll go first for this one uh, for uh, me. The Detroit Lions, with the third pick, select Jeff Okuda from from Ohio State, and it's another Ohio State guy, which is funny. Back to back, and he's he's an elite he's elite an elite cornerback, and um, I think he will definitely his skills really match with what the Lions want. I believe, and I believe he'll be an an impact right away. Yeah, absolutely, and I agree with that pick. I, I I feel like, though, the Lions are a team that you cannot ignore for possible trade talks. They have, they have been in that same boat with talking to teams about potentially trading down. I will not be that su- surprised if they do trade down, but I, I will not be surprised if they stick to that pick. Uh, but I agree. If we're going to go no trade here, like I think we – because draft day trades, again, are so unpredictable, you don't even know. Uh, if we're going to go no trade here, I 100% agree with this pick. They could go in a couple different ways, but, again, I think Jeff Okuda from Ohio State is a pick. And I really like how you nailed their – it's a great fit in what they want, uh, the Lions-wise, schematically. I mean, you got a guy at the at the head coaching slot, Matt Patricia, a former New England Patriot defensive coordinator. He likes those defensive guys. And he Okuda is a tough physical player. That is what the Lions want on defense – uh, they already added a couple of New England Patriots on defense the past couple of seasons. I think Okuda will fit right in. And not to mention with the fit coaching-wise, the Lions traded away Darius Slay. Darius Slay wanted out. The Lions traded him to the Philadelphia Eagles. That opens up a big hole at cornerback, too. Now, they did sign Desmond Trufant from the Atlanta Falcons in free agency. Desmond Trufant is not an upgrade from Darius Slay at all. So putting a young guy in Jeff Okuda – in that second cornerback slot, or maybe even first, that'll really help. And Desmond Trufant, as much as I, as much as I'm not trying to bash him, it's not a bash. I mean, Darius Slay is younger and more so in his prime than Trufant. It'll really help Okuda with playing with, with a veteran like Desmond Trufant. So I could totally see the Lions taking him with this pick. Okuda, number three. Exactly. And it's right place, Rob. Right place, right time. Right opportunity, right there. The opportunity is there for him, and I expect him to take that opportunity and run with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So moving on to pick number four with the New York Giants. I believe they're going to go with uh, offensive lineback. 
Isaiah Simmons. And uh, he's uh, he's a he's uh, from Clemson, 6'3", 238 pounds. He he's quick for he's he's really quick for being a linebacker. And um, he get he literally gets everywhere. He's like all over the field. He posted 104 tackles, seven sacks, 16 and a half tackles, and he had three interceptions in 15 games last season. So I think I think he'll be a huge impact on the Giants because I believe the Giants need they need some speed on their team right now. Yeah, I this is where you said the first couple picks are going to be like pretty predictable. But eventually we're going to start disagreeing. And I got to say, man, I think the Giants are going to go in a different direction with this pick. Um, Isaiah Simmons is a fantastic player. Uh, he is a once-in-a-lifetime talent. Uh, he plays the linebacker position and the safety position. I mean, what? Who does that? He's great talent, a uh, great kid, amazing player. I can say enough about him. But I, I do think the Giants – We'll take a shot at him. I th- I could definitely see where it's possible, but I think there is a much bigger glaring need for the Giants, and I think they they will should address this first. It's the offensive line. They've had one of the worst offensive lines the past couple of years. That's why Eli Manning was getting thrown around a ton his last couple of years. Daniel Jones as well, one of the top three in sacks last year. The Giants need help at the offensive line, and there are three – Really, really good offensive line prospects that are projected to go around the top 10. That is Makai Becton from Louisville, which I had him going to the Giants in my mock draft. 6'7", 364 pounds. What? Are you kidding me? That, that, that is insane for measurements from an offensive tackle. And he's athletic, too. Never gets beat. I had the Giants picking him. But like we said, stuff changes, and I don't think Becton will be the pick there. There are two other offensive linemen that I feel like will get nodded over him. Uh, Jedrick Wills from Alabama, another sensational tackle. That is the other one of the other guys. And then Tristan Wirfs from Iowa, another sensational offensive lineman. Um, like I said, I, I had the Giants picking Becton, but there has been a little bit of a uh, controversy with him. Uh, I believe it was a it's a random drug test. He failed. I'm not sure what the what that means or what, if what he was taking. Might have been a mistake, but he's talked teams about it. But I don't think the Giants are going to take Becton. I think eventually right now it's going to be Jedrick Wills at that first line. Um, Giants need offensive line help. And like I said, I, I could, I'm not saying I disagree with you about Simmons. Like, I don't – if they take him, I'll be like, oh, okay. But I think – the, uh, they need offensive line help, and especially with a young quarterback and Daniel Jones like that, you got to protect him while you can. So I think the Giants go offensive line, and I, I'll go any of the three, but I'll go for now Jedrick Wills from Alabama. Yeah, I, that that's actually a really good pick. I, I think it would be either him or or uh, Simmons, like I said. But those are two two great picks that – I believe will definitely work for the Giants. Yeah, um, I think I think we kind of figured out our rhythm now. I, I went two, and then you went two, so I'll I'll do the next two first. Yeah, uh, number I five. Is, I think this is where we we might have different answers too. Five and six. This is where these next two picks are going to be interesting. Uh, number five, we have the Miami Dolphins. Now, this one. How many times have this year have we talked about the Dolphins tanking for Tua? Then they started winning, and we're like, wait, the Dolphins can win games? What? They did just that. They knocked the Patriots out of a uh, uh, first-round bye, and they moved. And you know what? The funny thing about that is, too, they don't even have to tank for Tua. They have the number five spot. Other play, uh, pieces will fall into places for the other teams ahead of them. And you know what? There is no doubt in my mind that they will pick a quarterback. Um, I have to bring him up, though, because I feel so sorry for the man. Poor Josh Rosen gets drafted by the Cardinals in 2018. Then when Cliff Kingsbury gets hired, scheme-wise, it's not a fit. They go after Kyler Murray. They ship him off to Miami. Then this year, he he's hoping to be the guy in Miami. They get Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, say what you want about the 5-11 and Dolphins. Fitzpatrick did all he could with that team and played phenomenal. Uh, but, again, it just leaves a really crappy situation for Josh Rosen. 
I don't think he's going to be with the Dolphins next year. I don't know what his future looks like. It is so dim again. Draft day, it's going to come to light really quickly, but Miami is going to take a quarterback. There's no doubt about that in this draft to either – I think the best option is is sitting behind Fitzpatrick. That will be huge for whoever the pick is. In my mock draft, I had Mr. Tua Tagovailoa going to the Dolphins. Um, At number five, I thought, "Mm, Miami, you know what? They're they're going for him. They don't even have to tank for him. But the more I think about this pick, the more Tua's injury history comes up. Yeah, he says he's 100% healthy. We see the videos. All right, what about the future? They can't look at this stuff now with the coronavirus pandemic breaking down. Um, as much as they love Tua, is it going to be a smart or sexy pick? What do they want to do here? I think they're going to go smart with this one. And the other, and the smart way to go other than Tua is Oregon quarterback Justin Herbert, the other big quarterback out there, 6'6", 230 pounds, incredible arm. I, you know what? I'll be honest. I could see the Dolphins taking either one. I wouldn't be shocked if they took either one. At first, I was leaning toward Tua but with his injury history and whatnot. I think they're going to go Herbert right now. Uh, have this guy sit behind Fitzpatrick. Really good guy. I think I've said this for a couple months now, and I, and I stand by I think it's a bold prediction. I think Justin Herbert out of this quarterback class will have the best NFL career. Miami Dolphins, though, I'm going Herbert. But if they pick Tua, I will not be in the least bit shocked. Yeah, so for me, the number five pick, Miami Dolphins. They select also Justin Herbert. I know I know we were discussing this earlier that it was between Tua and Herbert. And I believe Herbert will be a will be the best fit. Especially since Tua's injuries have uh has has some sort of a say in that and I, I believe Herbert's a, the best fit for the Dolphins right now, especially with Fitzpatrick being uh being uh, being over at over in Miami, and uh, I believe Herbert will definitely learn from Fitzpatrick, and it's the same situation that uh, that Burrow is in, pretty much two two great quarterbacks to learn from, and they're both great guys. So uh, Herbert ha- has an incredible arm, like you said. He went three three thousand four hundred seventy one passing yards last year, thirty two touchdowns, six interceptions, for a sixty six point eight complete percentage. So I believe the Oregon product will be going to the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, and like I said, that's just a complete wild card between those two. Those are the big toss up, and that also that also leads into the next. Pick at number six, the Los Angeles Chargers, with the departure of longtime quarterback Philip Rivers. That quarterback position is looking nice and open. And very surprisingly, head coach Anthony Lynn has came out and said that they are not opposed to riding with Tyrod Taylor as a starting quarterback for not just this year, but maybe the next year. I was scratching my head. I was like, what in the world? I thought Tyrod Taylor was a career backup, but if Lynn likes him, that's going to be interesting. They're, the Chargers are obviously – quarterback is the biggest glaring need that they will need. Their defense is pretty much stacked. they got a great defensive line. Vimec and Core solid. Their secondary is really, really underrated as well. Uh, the offensive line, they really helped themselves out in free agency. They took care of running back. Um, that quarterback position is the only one that they are still unsolved in. And I do think it is possible that they go offensive tackle – but I still think right now you got to plan for the future. And as much as I want to say Cam Newton might go to the Chargers, I do think the Chargers are going to want for a younger option of the future. Um, and that's why I think with the Dolphins taking Herbert, as much as, as much as it's back and forth, I'm going with this. I think since Miami took Herbert, they're going to go, they're going to go after two off. They're like, you know what? No, he's, if two was on the board, we can't pass on him. Um, and that's and honestly, that plays out perfectly for Anthony Lynn because if to, whatever Tua's health is, if he's not healthy like he claims, if he is, either way, he could still go with Tyrod Taylor and have Tua sit behind Tyrod. The Chargers have a really stacked receiving court, too. Tua's going to have some great guys to work with throwing the ball to as well. And very similar to what he had at Alabama, and we'll, we will get to that later in this episode. I promise you that, uh, what he worked with at Alabama. But, very similar situation there, but again, this goes hand in hand. 
Tua and Herbert is that's going to be the biggest question mark is who's going to go where. The Chargers are the more unknown team. They could go another position other than quarterback. Like Isaiah Simmons isn't out of the question. Um, even another offensive tackle. But I think the, the smart decision would be quarterback here. So since Herbert's off the board, Tua, you're heading to LA, buddy. Yeah, I cannot. I couldn't agree more with you there. I believe with the sixth round, with the sixth pick in the NFL 2020 draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select quarterback from Alabama, Tua. And uh, he's six feet, 270, 217 pounds. He's, uh, he's quick when, he, when he's healthy and he's mobile. He, uh, he has a really good deep, throw, deep ball. And his, his ability to, to shuffle his feet and to create open, open lanes for him to go is top notch. And I believe Tua's best fit will be to the San, to the Los Angeles Chargers, but I could all, all also I could see the Tua and the Herbert flip also. Yeah, that's again I can't mention it enough. I wouldn't I will not be surprised if either one of them if if they go Tua Miami goes Tua or Herbert. That's to me the biggest shock. What, There's honestly a what, bunch of a bunch of players that could go could flip flop too. I really think though I just thought about this now. I really do feel like if Miami takes Herbert, the Chargers are taking Tua, no doubt. But if Miami takes Tua, there's a there's a not I won't say a, a better or a, I won't say there's more. It's it's hard to word it. If Miami takes Tua, there's a little bit there's a little bit better of a chance the Chargers might go with someone else other than a quarterback. Because simply, I feel like they, I think they like two or more, despite the medical stuff. So that's that. That's just my thing. If two is on the board, they're taking them. But if it's still Herbert, if Herbert's the other guy, or even I'll throw Jordan Love in there too. Jordan Love is another interesting guy. I feel like we have to talk about it to talk about him at some point. I I I, I don't want to save him for right now. We should probably get to him later, but. I'll keep Jordan Love's name in the mix, though, too. He's another very interesting guy in this draft class, but so many different options for the Chargers right there. Yeah, and there's so many options, and they could go either way. They could go the quarterback, sl- the quarterback way, or they could go a totally different direction. It's just all whatever whatever the management decides to do during at the draft at that point. Yeah, agree. So let's go you're on. Those, uh, yeah, pick, you're up first with these next two picks. picks. All right, so pick number seven, we got the Carolina Panthers picking. And for me, for the seventh round pick in the 2020 NFL draft, the Carolina Panthers select Jedrick Wills from Alabama, 6'4", 312-pound offensive tackle. And he, he, Willis is a, Wills is a strong, and he's a powerful blocker. And he's very he's very athletic, and he can start on the left side, and but he can go off, he can go from like the left side to the right side really quickly, which I think is key, especially he's especially for like mobility wise, he's really mobile, and I think he's a really good fit for the Panthers and what they need at this point. Yeah, and and this this is gonna be the second time I'm gonna do this, but. I I I did obviously Jedrick Wills is already off my board. I disagree with that pick. Uh this one's a little more this one's a little more blatant. I do think the Carolina Panthers are a little bit more figure out on the offensive tackling uh, their their positions. They actually traded and the the Panthers and the Chargers swapped offensive tackles this year. Russell Okung was sent from the Chargers to the Panthers. Uh Trey Turner was sent from the Panthers to the Chargers. The Panthers have have a little bit more figured out at offensive tackle, so I don't think they're going to go in that direction. In my first mock draft, I had them going Derek Brown from Auburn, the big defensive tackle. I do not think they are going to go there right now. There's a guy that you picked going number four. This is kind of like a swap. I think this is where Isaiah Simmons is going to fall into the Carolina Panthers. They can have him play a linebacker. They can have him play safety. This dude is going to be a monster. And location-wise, 
this fits Simmons so well. He gets to stay in the Carolinas and really help this Panthers team rebuild. They got big Christian McCaffrey now on the offense they can build around with that new contract. And now with seven pick in the NFL draft, they're going to take a guy who can play multiple positions on their defense and really help that rebuild kick up with Matt Rule as head coach. So I think this is where Isaiah Simmons is going to fall. As much as I think Carolina will be tempted to take Brown, Brown is a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal uh, pass rusher. I think they can't pass on Simmons here. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that point. But I'm still going to stick with uh, Simmons going – Going fourth round for me, so yeah, I, can, I, I, do, I do respect uh, him going to the Panthers though. That that also could be a really good fit for him as well. I could see it. I could see it. Yeah. So uh, going on to uh, pick number eight, we got the the Arizona Cardinals going for pick number eight, and. For this, for this pick, the um, the Cardinals pick Mecky Mecky ben- Becton from uh, Louisville. I'm gonna go. Uh, Becton is a six seven, three hundred sixty sixty four pound offensive tackle. That w- that's big. He's tall, and uh, he's a he's a really strong offensive tackle, and he's very powerful for for his frame. And he's he's quick as well for for uh, how tall he how, how tall he is, and he's a really good pass protection player. And I believe Mackey ben- Becton's a good fit for the Cardinals. Yeah, honestly, I really like what you were doing with that pick. I will disagree. I I'm I think the Cardinals are going to go in another direction. I will say though, offensive tackle is a need for the Cardinals. Um, and especially if they want to protect Kyler Murray in this air raid offense, you got a massive weapon in DeAndre Hopkins pairing with the great Larry Fitzgerald. Offensive offensive tackle would be a really good need for them here at eight. I don't think they're going to go offensive tackle here. I really like that point though. Uh, keeping the big man Becton, protecting the little man Kyler Murray. No disrespect, Murray is a baller, but I think the the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals could trade down from this pick. Um, I think the Cardinals have a very good chance to get some extra picks as well and not even trade that far down, maybe like five, 10 spots back, which is not bad for extra picks. Uh, but if I'm, if, if we're, again, if we're going no trades right now, I think the guy I mentioned last, uh, pick for the Panthers in my last mock draft, I think Derek Brown will go to the pan, uh, car, excuse me, the Cardinals at number eight, um, Cardinals need help with the defensive, uh, line too. both lines. They need help at, but I think. Uh, for a little bit more of a bolster defensively, I think they could use that. Uh, Derek Brown of the, the Cardinals at number eight, pairing him with uh, Chandler Jones, an outside linebacker that's going to be a pretty nasty defensive line. They might need a little more help. And again, Jack, I really, really loved what your analysis was on that offensive line need. It's it's there, but I'm going to say they go with Brown. I think Brown is a freak of nature. Again, he's made some great plays back at Auburn. Uh, so I think that's where he's going to fall. Yeah, that that that's also a very respectable pick. Like a lot of these guys, pretty much like all these guys that are in the draft right now, they're they're strong, powerful, explosive. There's this is honestly probably one of the best drafts draft classes that we have seen in a while. Agree, agree with that. Uh, if we're gonna be moving on, I think I got the next two picks as well. Number nine, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. This one is a wild card. I, I tell you what, that there are a lot of different ways the Jaguars can go with this pick. Um, they have, let's see, they're, they have been the trade, the team that has been trading away all their assets this year. Calais Campbell to the Ravens, uh, Jalen Ramsey to the Rams, A.J. Bouye to the Broncos. Uh, you, and they have been currently in regarding – trade talks surrounding Leonard Fournette. They're starting running back. The Jaguars are the other big team that are in clear rebuild mode. Um, I just lost my train of thought. The other guy that they they franchise tagged uh, defensive end Yannick Nguake. I think I said it right. 
Yannick Nguake, a uh, defensive end, he has clearly said he does not want to be there anymore. Um, the Jaguars have a buttload of options they could do with this pick. Uh, but th- this guy, I've, I've seen him rise in a couple people's draft boards, and I think this is right now, depth chart-wise, they need this more than anyone. They traded away both their two starting cornerbacks, A.J. Bouye, Jalen Ramsey, and they're going to go with someone not far from home. Uh, I, I Currently, I will have them select C.J. Henderson from my favorite college team, the Florida Gators. Henderson is regarded almost in the same conversations as Okuda and another cornerback that I, that I will name later in this draft, but Henderson will be a great fit for this Jaguars defense. He could easily be uh, slid into a starting spot right away with the, the lack of depth that they traded both their two guys. Uh, but that's the, the Jaguars can do a bunch of stuff with this pick, but I think cornerback is the biggest need right now. Uh, CJ Henderson, number nine. Yeah, I could I could definitely see that, but I'm going to go a different direction for this pick. I believe with the ninth pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to go with Tristan Wirfs from uh, from Iowa, who's an offensive tackle, 6'5", 320 pounds. He's, uh, Wirfs is uh, he's really good, he, um, especially on the right side, but he could also be really good on the left side, so he's really dominant on both sides of the field. And uh, he's a uh, – He's he's a big guy. He's uh he's mobile. He's athletic. Uh, I believe that the Jaguars just need some help on the offensive tackle side. So I believe this is a good fit for Tristan Wirfs. Yeah, good pick again. Uh, the the offensive there's going to be a couple offensive tackles that are going to be taken right around now, and I'll I'll kick it up a notch as well. Uh, number ten, Cleveland Browns. I. I will. I will not be shocked if the Browns are another one that will trade back to someone that need, that may want to jump the gun. Like I could see, uh, possibly some a team like the Falcons or the Saints, or I'll even throw the Cowboys in there to possibly trade up with the Browns. And the Browns, I think, will openly listen to those talks uh, because their biggest need right now is again on the offensive line. They did a good job of amping that up in free agency as well. They signed our Jack Conklin from the Titans. I believe they got someone else as well, but I can't think of who that is the second. But there's one little spot left in that offensive line, and I think Baker Mayfield will get a nice big smile on his face when they go offensive tackle Tristan Wirfs at number 10. I have him one spot behind you, Jack. Uh, Wirfs will be selected by the Browns to complete their offensive line and Kevin Stefanski's offense will have that good offensive line and everything else figured out. The Browns the Browns might be ready for a little playoff push. And also keep an eye out for a possible Odell Beckham trade. There have been massive rumors linking him to possible trade sources. We'll see if any of those are true. But with this pick, I got Tristan Wirfs to complete that Browns offensive line. Yeah, definitely. I, I can definitely see that. But for me – I got the 10th round pick going to the Cleveland Browns for uh, Derek Brown from Auburn. And uh, I know you picked him earlier in the, in the draft, but I got him with the Browns because the Browns, the Browns defense needs a little bit of work, I believe. And I think Derek Brown definitely, definitely fits that, fits that Browns type of style football. And uh, Derek Brown, he's, he's quick and he's like, He's able to make some plays, especially in the backfield. He can make plays anywhere, and he's uh, he's really quick. He's athletic. He's strong. I believe he'll be a good he'll be a good pickup for the Browns, especially since their defense has been struggling a bit. Yeah, I can see that pick. Um, the Browns, yeah, they struggled defensively as well. I, I could see that pick. I could definitely see that pick. Uh, they could trade down and do a couple of options, but I, I could 100% see that pick. Yeah, so uh, going on around 11 – or I keep saying round. Pick 11. Very good. The, the New York Jets have picked number 11 in the 2020 NFL draft, and I believe the New York Jets are going to go C.D. Lamb, wide receiver from Oklahoma, 6'2", 198-pound wide receiver. CD Lamb is uh he's he's really explosive and he's uh 
he's a steady posi- posi- positionally guy. And uh, he, uh, he had 58 receptions to post 1,208 yards and 14 touchdowns in 13 games last season. So I believe he'll be a huge impact for the Jets right away. And he'll be a, he'll be a contender for one of the top wide receivers on the Jets. Yeah, this is really where the wide res- – the, the, let me just say, I, I've, I've mentioned that this draft class is very strong. There is, one, there is one class that I think is possibly the strongest that I've ever seen that I've been paying attention to the draft, which has been the last couple of years. But most people have said this. The wide receiving core is phenomenal this year. And I could – the Jets, the wide receiver is definitely one of the directions where I could see the Jets going – Uh, They did lose their main guy, Robbie Anderson, in free agency to the Carolina Panthers. So that really opens up the number one slot. I can really, really see the Jets going there. They got guys like Jamison Crowder, who just came from there last year. Uh, um, Brashad Perryman from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They also added him. Uh, There was another guy they added as well. I can't think of his name. Uh, They also have Braxton Berrios. Uh, he's a couple-year guy out of Miami, Florida. There was this one guy, though, that they added in free agency that I cannot think of his name. And I'm kind of blanking out. But I'll go back. To, I'll stick to the script with about the draft. I think the Jets, That if I'm going different with you here, I'll, I'm just going to say that I, I will not – the Jets are not going to take a receiver. That is the other direction where I think they can go. I think they can even settle for one later in the draft in the later rounds. But I think the biggest need for them is, again, that offensive tackle position is just so glaring. And with the couple studs like that who are still out there, the one guy that I have not picked out of the big three that is left is Big Mackay Becton out of Louisville. He'll fall to the Jets at number 11. Again, 6'7", 364 pounds. That is a big fella right there. I've seen some tape from him, and he does not get beat. Sam Darnold is going to be so happy that he has someone like that to protect them. And this could really kind of kick the Jets passing game up a notch if they uh, decide to go here, which I think that is the best possible need. Again, Jack, I really respect the wide receiver pick here, but I really do think that they could take a good offensive tackle right here or offensive lineman right here and then go possible receiver later in the draft. So that's, that's just my take. I really like the pick though. Um, yeah, that, that's that's what I got. Yeah, for sure. I I, I could definitely see that as well, but I'm going to stick with my pick. So going on to pick number 12, we got the, the Las Vegas Raiders picking at number 12. And I got I got an, another offensive tackle guy, and I'm going with Andrew Thomas from Georgia, offensive tackle from Georgia. And uh, he's 6'5", 315 pounds, and he has uh, he has really good size, which which will help him largely on the field. And he has really good footwork, and he's uh, he's very athletic, very very smooth, tech technically, and he he covers the holes whenever you need them. And uh, I believe the Raiders will go with Andrew Thomas. I'm going to go different with you on this one. Uh, the Raiders, I'm going to kind of counter that argument. This is the first time where I'm kind of disputing you a little bit. I think the Raiders' offensive line was really was really strong last year. And us being Bears fans, that is the one game last year where the Bears' defensive line got dominated the whole game was the Raiders. Uh, that's why Josh Jacobs ran all over them, 125 rushing yards, I believe. The Raiders, I think they're pretty much set offensive uh, offensive line. I don't think that's going to be the direction. I'm going to kick it up a notch again with this receiving cord. That, that is the big question mark that they're going to fill right here. They got guys like Hunter Renfro out of Clemson. Uh, Nelson Aguilar, the, the, most, the best drop passer guy in the NFL. Nobody drops more passes than Nelson Aguilar. They got him. Hopefully they can turn him around. Um, I – I believe Zay Jones is gone, the guy they traded from Buffalo last year. This is where, Jack, I think C.D. Lamb will fall. Number 12 to the Las 
Vegas Raiders, almost at Oakland. And this one's a bit of a question mark. There are three kind of guys that within these next four picks could possibly go uh, any of the three. Uh, I think, though, this is what the Raiders are going to do. They have a couple of options here, but I think C.D. Lamb will be the pick. This will be a great target for Rubber's quarterback for the Raiders because that's another interesting scenario. We've got Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, possibly a guy they might pick in the draft. I'm not sure, but this will be a great addition. you got Tyrell Williams at the number one slot over there. you got C.D. Lamb. If they pick him up here, you got him or another guy. I think they're going to go with Lamb and put him in with Hunter Renfro, a really good athlete out of Clemson, and then Nelson Aguilar. They're going to fix his drop problem. I got, I got faith in John Gruden and Mike Mayock. Uh, but that's the big need right there. Raiders are going CeeDee Lamb from Oklahoma. And I've heard this dude has had comparisons to DeAndre Hopkins. That is a massive comparison. And people have said that this comparison is not far off. So this guy's got a lot of praise. That's it's going to be interesting, especially if, you have a, if you're comparing those two. I, I really want to see him do – uh, go up there with them like that. That'll be a, that'll be a lot of fun to see. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. So uh, number thirteen, we're gonna move on here. I'll take I'll take the shit. I'll start from here. We got the San Francisco 49ers at number thirteen. Um, this was a trade that uh, sent DeForest Buckner from the Niners to the Colts. And the Niners got the Colts' first round pick in return. A huge – it's kind of like a, uh, a uh, kind of a draw and draw here. You lose a key defensive line guy, but you gain a first round pick that you can use anywhere to try and get better. So the Niners really nailed the deal on this one. Yeah, they lost Buckner, but they got a first round pick from Indy. This is where another wide receiver is going to go, Jack. This is where I have – the first of the big Alabama receivers in the draft going. I got Henry Ruggs the third going to drop to the 49ers at number 13. It was clear last year that when the Niners traded for Emmanuel Sanders from the Broncos, they needed receiving help. When Marquise Goodwin went down, all they really had was Debo Samuel and George Kittle. They had other guys step up, like Kendrick Bourne really came in play, but nobody really knew who he was until he stepped up. Uh, even Ooh, what the, oh, Kendrick Bourne was one, and then I can't think of this guy's name. Kendrick Bourne was one receiver that really stepped up for them, and then there was another one. I can't think of his name. I'll think of it later. But the Niners, they're, they need receiving help. There's no doubt. And with Emmanuel Sanders departing for the New Orleans Saints, Ruggs will be explosive. I mean, this guy, have you seen his, his tape with the speed? This guy, him and his other Alabama fellow wide receiver, they have speed up the wazoo. It's crazy. And the 49ers have whipped play action passing around so much. I, I'm trying to envision a scenario where Henry Ruggs just breaks free like 50 yards down the field with nobody covering him. Play action, great scheme design. And with his speed, he could easily fool defenders just not only that, but just in general. He'd be a great fit for the Niners' offense. Uh, so the, I got them going Henry Ruggs the third out of Alabama. Yeah, I, I also agree that the 49ers needs, uh, need, a wide, need a wide receiver. And uh, I'm going to go with another Alabama guy, Jerry Judy, who is a who's wide, wide receiver for Alabama. 6'1", 193 pounds. He's a – Jerry Judy's a really strong, strong guy. He's he's smooth. He can he can finish plays. He's a – he's mobile. He's flexible. He's he's a all, all around a really, really good receiver. And I believe that the 49ers definitely need some help on the wide receiving – uh, line of things, so I believe Jerry Judy would be a good fit for them. Oh, and the other guy that I did, I think I forgot to mention, he's one of them. A uh, Dante Pettis is another guy from the for the Niners at receiver. But I agree. I got rug. You got I got rugs. You got Judy. We'll see where they go. Maybe C.D. Lamb might be open. We'll see. Uh, but the Niners, I could, I think they're going to go receiver here with this pick. Uh, I think it's me up again. Number 14, you got the Tampa 
no, not Tampa. Yeah, Tampa Bay. No. Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm, I'll cut the crap. Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 14. Um, this is an interesting one here. Um, my original mock draft, I had them picking a defensive tackle that is one of the best guys still out there, incredible story guy still out there. But the more that I think about it, if they want the 43-year-old, soon to be 43-year-old, six-time Super Bowl champ to be comfortable when he's throwing the ball to his amazing wide receivers and tight end, they need to protect him. And what better to protect him with the other best offensive tackle out there? Not a part of the big three, not a huge standout, but came from a very, very well school, uh, all around great, great school for prep for the NFL. I got Andrew Thomas from Georgia going number 14 in the Buccaneers. He'll be great on that offensive line coming from Bruce Arians. Great coach. Uh, and, again, protecting Brady is the number one aspect. If Brady doesn't get protected, Buccaneers might fall apart. So they got to protect him really, really well. And he'll be, he'll be a day one starter for sure. He'll, he'll be on that line and he'll, be, he'll get the nod. But I got – coming from a great school like that, Georgia has been consistently putting guys in the, prof- in the pros the last couple of years since Kirby Smart took over. But I think the trend continues. Andrew Thomas from Georgia at 14. Yeah, that, that's a really good pick. But for me, I'm going to go Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the 14th pick in the draft. They select Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina. He's a defensive tackle, 6'5", 324 pounds. He's, uh, he's, good, he's big for his size. And uh, he's, there's nothing getting around him. Like, he's, he's a big guy. And but no one's getting past him. He's he's fast. He's uh strong. He posted uh six sacks in twelve games for South Carolina last season, and I believe he'll be a good fit for the Buccaneers. Yeah, actually, that was the guy that I that I was talking about the defensive tackle. I had Kinlaw to the Buccaneers in my mock draft about a couple weeks ago. I I don't think the Bucs will go in that direction now. Kinlaw is a fantastic story. Off the field, this guy has overcome what what more adversity can you come over from? I don't know if you've read on him, but he was homeless, uh, I, I believe, more than one time throughout his, his childhood. Um, oh. And he, found, yeah, came to South Carolina and has really been amazing. Uh, off the field, inspirational as all get out. On the field, though, he definitely could use some work, but again, very, very explosive. I could see the Bucs going with that. Uh, signing up Donick and Sue might be a little bit of a uh, an X factor, though, of maybe they are not going to address that defensive line a little more. Him next to Sue, though, would be great. Uh, but I think the offensive line is where Tampa Bay is going to address with that 14th pick. And if we're all done with that, I think you're up first with this with these next two picks. Yeah, so with the number 15 pick in the draft, the, the Denver Broncos will select – Wide receiver from Alabama, Henry Ruggs III. He's a, he's a 5'11", 188-pound wide receiver. And he's, a, he's really fast. He, he's lightning quick. He's, a, he's very skilled, especially on, a, on shorter routes. He'll get past everyone. And he's, he's a dangerous threat, like, all around, especially, like, when he's towards the – by the red zone. He's, he's dangerous. So, I believe – the Denver Broncos will go with Henry Ruggs the third. We had him flip flopped. I had Ruggs to the Niners. You had Judy. You have Ruggs to the Broncos. I have Judy to the Broncos. Jerry Judy will be the pick for the Broncos. Um, this is again another glaring need for for Denver. I got to start off by saying their other two receivers, after trading away Emmanuel Sanders, their other two main receivers are Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick, and Deshaun Hamilton from Penn State. Deshaun Hamilton's not bad. Tim Patrick is eh, but come on. You need more flashier names. They aren't the quickest guys out there. Uh, Judy, electrifying speed, just like his his fellow bud, Ruggs, from Bama. That's what Tua had to work with there. Amazing uh, speedy guys. Uh, that in terms of speed and route running, they might be the best. I think CD Lamb might be a little bit better on the route running side as well, but you cannot ignore these guys' speed. And what better of a way can you put 
your young quarterback, Drew Locke, in with the position to now have number one, a number one guy in Cortland Sutton, who has been unbelievable his first two seasons as a pro. Uh, that guy has been amazing. He has turned into a great number one receiver for the Broncos. And now put him with Jerry Judy in that second slot. Absolutely electrifying. I think, I think the Broncos will be a team to look out for. I think they are one of the most underlooked teams for next year. I think they will make some noise in the, in the, in the, uh, in the NFL next year. And with them picking up Judy, no offense to Patrick and Hamilton, they can go into a little bit of a lesser role. They don't have to go all out to try and be that number two guy. They can go like slot or uh, extra filling guys. But that number two slot is big, and I think Judy will be the guy that fills that need for them. Yeah, I could, I could also see that. And uh, for me, we're, since we're – do you want to go to the 16 pick now? Yeah, sure. Go for All it. All right. So, with the 16th pick in the draft, the Atlanta Falcons select C.J. Anderson. Or C.J. And Anderson, my bad. You're good. He's a cornerback for one of my favorite college football teams, as college teams as well, Florida. And he's a 6'1", 204-pound cornerback, C.J. Henderson. Henderson, he, he plays big for his size, and he's very athletic, and his technique is really good. It's really solid. And uh, even though he, he needs to be a little more physical, I'd say, in his game, but overall, I think he's a very well-rounded player, and I believe it's a – best fit for Atlanta especially with the cornerback position so I believe the Atlanta Falcons will go with CJ Henderson yeah um this this one I I've constantly been hearing that the Falcons are going to be a team that will trade up in the draft uh so look out for that Atlanta could possibly be looking at a top 10 spot here whether they go I I had them picking CJ Henderson in my mock draft I think Henderson will will be stolen from the as at least in this one. Henderson will be stolen from the Jaguars. You are absolutely right about their cornerback position being one in question. Now that Desmond Trufant is gone, it's a it's a blank need, but there's another guy that I think they are going to take on and another kind of position that has been kind of uh kind of washed away in free agency. I think they are going to take a chance on Javon Kinlaw uh at the 16th spot. Um, Ken Law again, great athlete, incredible story. Um, Falcons lost a couple key defensive guys this offseason. Vic Beasley, they parted ways with him. Uh, there was another guy, I believe they took it as well. I can't, uh, I can't remember. But Dan Quinn, being a defensive minded coach, I think he won to bolster that defensive lineup uh, again just as well. They're, they got a bunch of new offensive weapons figured out, so it's time to look at that defense. And like I said, I really do agree that that cornerback position is a glaring need, and I think they might trade up for him. I think they're, they'll take a chance on Ken Law and really make him a really, really great defensive end. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that for sure. They, they need that position. Like, it's been struggling the last few years, so they definitely need that position. So we finally hit that halfway mark of the draft, or first round draft. And now here's a weird, here's a word from our sponsors. Ah, uh, just kidding. Just go go with it. All right. Well, halfway halfway home, we got the number seventeenth overall pick coming up. I'll take it again from here. The Dallas Cowboys are up with this pick. Uh, a couple question marks again for them too, but I think. I think they are going to go pretty similar with the Falcons with this pick. Another edge rusher guy that will be taken off the board. Cowboys are an interesting one. I don't know if they're completely set, uh, but I'm going to go here. Kalevon Chason from LSU. Hey, that's what I'm going to. Hey, nice. We're finally we're finally back in rhythm here. It's been a while. Hey. Uh, K- Kalevon Chason is the pick for me from LSU, and especially after – uh, edge rusher Robert Quinn left for the Bears. Um, Quinn, I literally read an article at Quinn uh, did a coin flip to see whether he would choose the Chicago Bears or the Atlanta Falcons in free agency 
Like he literally tossed a coin to determine which team he'll sign with. And it landed on whatever one was the Bears. So he went to the Bears. Um, so they're missing a guy right there in uh, Robert Quinn. Um, again, I can't – I feel like he, they're missing another guy too. But putting them up with uh, Demarcus Lawrence and then newly acquired Don Terry Poe, the defensive line is going to be refreshed, younger. Robert Quinn was a little bit older, a veteran. So this is a big, a big need address for the Cowboys. Uh, also, I would not be surprised if they want to trade up for a cornerback as well, like Henderson or if Okuda, Okuda could slip as well. So maybe the Cowboys will try to chase one of those guys. But Byron Jones left for a big payday for Miami. So cornerback is the, is the other huge need. And I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe go receiver here because outside of Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup's the other guy. But other than that, it's like, who in the world is this? But I think after losing Robert Quinn, they're going to replace him with a younger uh, younger guy, Kaylevon Chason from LSU. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. That's everything I would say, so I don't want to repeat it since you already said it. But my 17th round, 17th pick in the draft, Dallas Cowboys slot Kaylevon Chison from LSU. And, yeah, I don't want to repeat anything you said because you said said all was perfect with it. So that's my pick. Yeah. Uh, good job there. We're back on track. Back on track. Uh, nice to, yeah. Uh, I think we still have more though that we, that we are going different ways on, but the, there's another, another similarity. Uh, I believe number 18 is the dolphins. The second dolphins pick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one's another interesting one. I think the dolphins, uh, again, a couple of glaring needs there. Um, I've heard from top people around the NFL that the Dolphins had one of the worst offensive lines that people have ever seen. Like it was a joke. Some people described it as. So there is another offensive tackle that is still on the board. He is younger than a lot of those other guys that were selected up there, but he's still he's still on there. And Miami, they're going to get him time to uh, kind of you know develop. I think the Dolphins are going to have to go offensive line here. Austin Jackson from USC is the pick. I learned a lot about him also, I believe it was yesterday. Um, 20 years old, he's younger than a lot of these other guys coming up. But he took some time off because he donated some bone marrow to his sister who is battling this disorder. So really, really cool story again there, uh, helping his sister out. Again, not a lot of experience compared to these other guys. He's younger, but Miami will take him under his wing and they'll develop him up. But the Dolphins need offensive line help, and I think that'll be the pick right there. Austin Jackson from USC. Yeah, that's a that's a very cool story there, and I'm not going that pit that way, but I I respect that pick, and I think that they'd all he'd also be a good fit for the Dolphins. But for me, I'm gonna go with the night with the 18th pick. The Dolphins will select Xavier McKinney, safety for Alabama, six foot, two hundred one pound safety. And uh, Xavier McKinney is uh, he's a really good mobile safety. He can get he gets physical and runs support, and but he's also he'll also like get back and like cover for anyone who needs it. I also read that he's like he's a guy that you could ask him to do anything on defense, and he'll, he'll willing willingly do it. So that's also a big that's a huge thing to. That's a good thing to have, like uh, that you're able to do, you're willing to do anything that's asked of you, especially especially in sports. And I believe it'll be a good fit for the Dolphins, especially since the Dolphins been struggling for a little bit. I believe with this with this pick, they'll they'll definitely help their help their safeties out and their whole team overall, especially with that like willingness to do whatever it takes. Yeah, great pick. McKinney is another one that's been rumored either late first round or maybe early second round. He's all over the board. Again, great talent from Alabama. I could see the Dolphins going there as well. Uh, they got the cornerback position locked up. They got um, Byron Jones. And, oh, my God, how am I blanking out names again? Their other, their other high-paid corner. What is his name? I, I know who you're talking about. 
I just can't pick it out. Byron Jones, and then what? Uh, you know what? I'll come back. I'll figure it out later because they got they got another pick. Uh, but again, they got cornerback position figured out. Their other their safeties are a little more up in the air. So again, McKinney is a great pick. I could see them fully going for him at eighteen. Uh, I'll, I'll say they go offensive line with that one. I yeah. think you're up. You want to go next? Yeah, so uh, with the 19th pick in the draft, uh, the o- the Las Vegas Raiders select. Well, and I have this really quick. Tolan, do you want to go? I'm still trying to figure out that pick. Oh, okay. Um, Oakland. Oh, my – we both messed it up. That's, that is going to take a long time to get used to. I've gotten the Chargers done, but Las Vegas. I think this This is from the Chicago Bears for the Cleo Mack trade. Um, get, they're stocking up in the Mayock Gruden era. They have been picking up these guys in the draft uh, with picks, obviously. Uh, but there's been a noticeable trend, especially last year with the Raiders. They like – people from Clemson. Uh, last year, they picked up a cornerback, Trayvon Mullen. He was really, really good last year. Uh, he'll only get better this year. Hunter Renfro as well from Clemson. They also picked him up. Those are two, some of the two more notable guys. Cleland Farrell as well on the defensive line. And with this pick, the Raiders, as much as I want to put have them picking a linebacker, I don't think they will because they got Corey Littleton and Nick Kwiatkowski in free agency, they're going to pick up the other big Clemson quarterback in this year's draft, A.J. Terrell out of Clemson. Again, Mike Mayock loves these Clemson prospects, and he'll put them aside to his old teammate, uh, Trayvon Mullen. So the Raiders are going to go quarterback at this one. Like I said, I I really thought Oakland – oh, my, I did it again. Las Vegas would go linebacker, but I think signing Kwiatkowski – and Littleton is, is a nice job by them. They'll both be locked and loaded for starting. So, Cornmack is that other big one. So, I think uh, uh, A.J. Terrell will be the pick for, at 19. Yeah, that's that's a really good pick. For me, I finally figured it out. I was between a, a few guys, but I, I sat in on one guy. And I believe the Las Vegas Raiders will select quarterback from Utah State, Jordan Love. Oh, 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 oh. smoke screen season. Here we come. Yes, sir. This is where it gets wild. So, uh, Jordan Love, he's, his complete percentage is 61.9%. He threw for 3,402 3, 3, yards. He had 20 touchdowns. Although he did throw 17 interceptions, I still believe that he'll go number 19. And he's a, he's a good throwing quarterback, but he's also not afraid to run the ball. So I believe, I believe, uh, especially with uh, especially with the Raiders and how uh, Derek Carr will be. Derek Carr still on the Raiders, right? Yes, and actually, I I need to ask you this question: The Raiders have two glaring quarterbacks right now on the roster: Derek Carr and Marcus Mariota. He is inked for two years. I got. I think Mariota is going to be locked up. What? With the Raiders picking Jordan Love, what – this is your pick here, man. This is your your decision. You see this finger? Yeah. What will Derek Carr's future look like with that pick, in your opinion? I, I, I think Derek Carr is going to be gone soon. That's why I was, I was unsure if he moved or, or not yet. But I think he'll – it'll be a short tenure uh, co- this coming season, and they'll either get rid of him or – or I don't know what they'll do, but I believe Derek Carr is on the way out. And I believe uh, Marcus Mariota will be the mentor for Jordan Love coming in. Do you, what team do you think Carr will have a shot to go to? What, out of, do you think which, – which, which teams do you think? Ooh, that's a, it's tough. Ooh, that's, that's a tough question. Because I want to say the Bears, but we already picked up Foles. Yeah. But if if we drop Mitch, 
I believe that I believe Derek Carr will go to the Bears. Foles and Carr, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but overall, I think I think he could go to the Patriots as well. That's really the only other team that I could see a starting job glaring yeah, up at him. Just just for starting to the Patriots, and then for a backup, and possibly a starter. I believe the Bears. But I think I think the Patriots are probably more realistic, especially if since Carr is looking for a starting position. Yeah, I personally think Carr is going to stay put this season. They have been – the rumors about him have been glaring the last two years. I've said that word a lot, but they, there have been so many rumors regarding him. I personally think he'll stay this year, him and Mariota. Again, that's a very interesting quarterback room right hey, there. Who doesn't like discuss discussions? Uh, yeah. Smoke screen season, that's what I said. But that man right there, Jordan Love, is a very interesting figure in this draft, the most interesting quarterback in terms of where he'll fall. Jack's got him going to Las Vegas. Interesting pick. Hey, you didn't uh, we'll, in this time. we'll see where he falls for me if he even does in this first round. He's an interesting guy to look out for. So yeah. you, the Raiders you – some, You sometimes just have to pull out the, the random one, just squeeze it in somewhere and make it work. Yeah, getting that rabbit out of the hat, the old magic trick right there. Uh, the Raiders, though, two picks, they're done for him. Uh, we got number 20. I think, Jack, you want to go first for this one? Yeah, so uh, with the 20th pick in the draft, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, picking and I believe they're going to go with Justin Jefferson wide receiver from LSU 6'1 202 pound wide receiver he's a uh, Jefferson Justin Jefferson has definitely emerged in the past few seasons especially in uh, LSU's passing passing game and he's also uh, quick and he's he's fast obviously and he, he posted 111 catches for 1,540 yards and 18 touchdowns in 15 games last season, so he's a he's a huge threat for 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 any team, I believe, and he'll definitely be dangerous to watch. So with with that being said, I believe the Jaguars are going to pick Justin Jefferson. Very interesting pick. The Jaguars have some solid receivers on their hand. They got DJ Chark really stepped up last year. They got. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, uh, Chris Conley. They have some solid receivers. Uh, interesting pick right there. I believe the Jaguars go in another direction with this pick. Uh, you used this guy a couple picks ago. I'll, I think I'm going to go with him here. I'm going to go Xavier McKinney from Alabama, the safety. Uh, this will help, again, the, their rebuilding uh, phase. Uh, they drafted a corner and C.J. Henderson with that ninth pick, and now the one that they traded to the uh, uh, for Jalen Ramsey, that's what that, the Rams were supposed to pick here, so this is what they got from trading away Jalen Ramsey. Uh, they're going to use this to also add to their secondary. Xavier McKinney from Alabama. The rebuild is clear and evident in Jacksonville. This is another interesting pick, though, because I think they really could go defensive line because you got Yannick Nguake, who's been wanting a trade, has been very vocal about it. Uh, he's got franchise tag. Calais Campbell, also gone, traded to the Baltimore Ravens. So, you got that right there. I think they will also try to see if they could maybe get another pick so they could add to that defensive line. Interesting what the Jaguars might do here. Yeah, that's that's for sure. It's going to be an interesting pick for them for sure. So, uh, moving on to – Pick number 20 or 21, we got the Philadelphia Eagles, and they will select AJ Epinesa from from Iowa. And uh Epinesa is a he's a he's a big body at 6'5, 275 pounds, but he's also powerful, explosive. He's a he could push blockers out of the way and uh go for the sack on a on a quarterback, as well as break through that line. And he's also He's also really good whenever someone's trying to run. He's uh he's able to get there with the quickness he has and uh take them down. So I believe uh the Philadelphia Eagles will select AJ Epinesa from Iowa. 
I don't know about you. E- I know Eagles fans are crazy. They're probably the craziest fan base out there. I think if you were Roger Goodell or someone from the Eagles, I think you will get beer cans thrown at you like nobody's business. There is only one direction where I think the Philadelphia Eagles will go with this pick. Wide receiver. The Eagles were easily the most banged up team last year at the wide receiver position. You had Alshon Jeffrey go down. Nelson Aguilar can't catch a ball, like I already mentioned. But uh, he was out for the count a couple times last year. Uh, J.J. Arkega, white side, the rookie, he also had his fair share of injuries. Zach Ertz as well, even though he's a tight end. Again, injuries. Uh, Deshaun Jackson as well, injured. Uh, Matt Collins, they got rid of him. So the Eagles, they need a wide receiver. And if they will be like, yeah, yeah, chugging beers instead of chug, chucking beers if they pick a wide receiver. So I think the Eagles, they got to be smart here and pick up the best, the next best wide receiver on the board, Justin Jefferson from LSU. Fantastic route runner. He showed his skills off last year getting passes from Joe Burrow. Uh, and I think this is uh, – that's going to be the pick for Philly. The best guy still out there is on the board. So there is no doubt about it that I think the Eagles need to jump on the wide receiver bandwagon here and take the best guy left. And if, if one of those Alabama guys or CeeDee Lamb falls back there, they're going to get their hands on them, on them first. But I really don't think any of those three will be available past 15. So. Justin Jefferson is my pick. I got him one pick behind you. Yeah, that's definitely uh, very respectable. Yeah, and uh, I'll go ahead and do the next uh, pick. We got number 22, the Minnesota Vikings, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so this this pick, this might be confused. They got two picks coming up. This is not the original first-round pick. This was the pick that they traded for Stefan Diggs. This is what they got in return. One of the picks they got in return for uh, Buffalo. Got a first round pick. Can't complain there. Who do they trade? Who has got it traded away to Buffalo? Oh, yes. Another receiver. What are they going to do with this pick? I think they're going to replace him with the receiver. Vikings. They they have changed a lot in free agency, obviously. Diggs is gone. Uh, two of their cornerbacks are gone. Xavier Rhodes is gone. And I believe Trey Wayne, too? Yeah. Someone, from, someone went from the Vikings to the Bengals. I think it was Trey Wayne's. Yeah, I think possibly. so. Uh, and then also, Everson Griffin on that defensive line is not coming back. Uh, I believe Neil Hunter is. Uh, I could possibly see the Vikings trying to trade for Yanni Kinguake to bolster that defensive line. I could also see him going to another team. We will see about that in a little bit. But I think with this pick, the Vikings, they have to pick up a receiver here to pick that number two spot back up. Ola B.C. Johnson is not the answer at the number two spot. Uh, they uh, Laquan Treadwell is their other interesting guy. They uh, He went to the Atlanta Falcons. So with this pick, the receiving class gets a little bit interesting after Jefferson here. It's kind of those three, then Jefferson, and then it kind of – there's a bunch of other interesting receivers. But this guy that I think the Vikings will pick up at number 22 balled out at the NFL Combine. And I think out of the University of Baylor, Denzel Mims will go to the Vikings at number 22. Kirk Cousins is going to be smiling with this pick. He gets another interesting threat, but again – Denzel Mims balled out of the combine. He had a, one of the best combines out of all the receivers. So the Vikings are going to like that. Hey, buddy, come get some balls from Kirk Cousins. Denzel Mims, number 22. Yeah, so uh, for me, I'm going to go the opposite route. I'm going to go 22 with the 22nd pick. Minnesota Vikings select inside linebacker Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma, 6'2", 241 pounds. He's a – He's a linebacker. He's uh he's quick. He has an elite. He has an elite speed, or elite speed. That's uh what I read. He's also uh mobile. He's quick. He's uh he's able to go down, go down and uh go downhill against the run, and uh, he's he's strong, which is good, and he's uh definitely gonna be a threat. 
So with the 22nd pick, I believe the Vikings will go with Kenneth Murray. Interesting pick. Uh, I got a lot to say about Kenneth Murray coming up, so we'll, we'll wait to that. If you want to go first for the, your next pick, which is yeah, so what pe- some people should consider one of the most interesting picks of this whole entire draft. Yeah, so with the 23rd pick of the draft, the New England Patriots, I believe, will select – Quarterback Jake, Jacob Eason from Washington. He's, he's, uh, six, he's six six, two hundred thirty one pounds. He has a very strong arm. He's able to go deep, and he's uh, he usually connects a lot when he's going deep, when he's throwing that deep ball. He's uh, also very mobile, especially going side to side, and I believe he could definitely definitely get the starting job in New England. As long as uh, they don't go for like the Patriots don't get like a current starter from the NFL right now, I believe Jacob Eason could be a starting quarterback for them. Wow! Oh wow! Jacob Eason in the first round. Yes, I think he's a very talented kid. I believe he's a day two pick though. But all I gotta say is it's a family affair because I don't know if you knew. His father, Tony Eason, was also drafted by the New England Patriots mm. and was a starting quarterback back in 1985 when the Monsters of the Midway of Chicago Bears destroyed them. But that is very interesting. That Yeah, the, the Patriots, they also, they also need a quarterback. So Yes, I, I believe they do as well. Although, I think they will pick a quarterback in the second day of the draft. I do not think they will go quarterback here. And I've realized that more on because I had them picking a quarterback in my mock draft. I do not now. And the more I think about this pick, the more it makes so much sense to me. You mentioned him just a little bit ago. I think Kenneth Murray is going to be the pick at, from Oklahoma at number 23. This makes more sense than I have ever thought it was. Uh, Jamie Collins and Kyle Van Noy are both gone from New England. Like Kyle Van Noy and Jamie Collins, that main linebacking crew, middle linebacker, they're gone from the Patriots. Gaping hole right there. And yeah, that's a huge and I, hole. And I said I got a lot to say about Kenneth Murray, and I, I do. Kenneth Murray has been a guy that people have been raving about his interviews at the Combine. They said this guy is so mature, so smart, such a character, such a leader. Um. Great guy off the field, and and then physicality on the field is unbelievable. And so, like I said, the more I thought about it, this totally fits the Patriot way, not just in general, but on defense. Tough, physical, um, aggressive, tackling. Murray fits the Murray fits the profile so well. And especially, like I said, I just thought of that on the fly, though. I, I just realized that Jamie Collins and Kyle Van Noy are both out. That is a glaring hole for the the Patriots. Murray is an unbelievable athlete that can fit that. And then with people raving about how good his interviews are, what more can you say? The Patriots always are going to jump the gun with that. Although I will say, it will not surprise me if they take an an offensive lineman. I've heard another guy thrown out there. Uh, He's a center from Michigan, Cesar Ruiz. I've heard him thrown out there a lot as well. But I think that this Kenneth Murray kid, they, they, they're going to start with him for replacing that linebacking group because Collins and Van Noy were a really good crew and they're both gone. So Kenneth Murray, the tough Oklahoma kid, 23rd overall to the Patriots. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. And going off of uh, Cesar Ruiz, I got him going to the Saints in the next, in the next pick. Okay, okay. So uh, I'll start. I'll start off since I already said uh, my pick for this one. If if that's fine. No, no, no. Go ahead. So with the twenty fourth pick, I believe the New Orleans Saints will select guard Caesar Ruiz from uh, Michigan. He's a six three, three hundred seven, three hundred seven pound guard, and he's uh he's very powerful. He's very athletic, which I think will help him especially with uh with blocking, especially in the NFL. And he's he's explosive, which will also help with the with blocking and not letting guys get to his quarterback. So 
he'll definitely he'll definitely contribute right away, I believe. So uh, with that being said, the New Orleans Saints select Cesar Ruiz with the 24th pick in the draft. Get ready because I'm going to drop another bombshell right here. With the 24th pick, I'll, I'll do a Roger Goodell right here. The dun, 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 With the 24th pick in the 2020 virtual NFL draft, the New Orleans Saints select Jordan Love, quarterback, oh. Utah State. Yes, folks. There it is. Yes. There it is. Yes, I have done it. The mystery man is off the board. Why am I picking – Jordan Love to go to the New Orleans Saints. Let me, let me explain something to you here. Drew Brees signed a two-year deal worth $50 million. It's pretty sure we, we might know he's going to play this year. We're not sure. I'm, I'm not even convinced he might play next year. The even bigger implication is he signed a broadcasting deal with NBC after he retires. Like he's got his, he has his future literally planned out. Like, he is going to NBC to be the eventual replacement for Chris Collinsworth on Sunday Night Football. Th- this is this is almost a guaranteed fact. So we're not going to see. Well, here's guy anymore. We're go- we're going to see. Yeah, and you know, the, look at great route right there. Drew Brees is going to be a commentator, and this pick with the Saints' vertical offensive passing game, Love is going to thrive. He has, I believe, more arm strength than the Saints hoped for. He really showed that at the Combine. And I think that the Saints are going to prepare for the future. I do think they might want to address maybe the defense a little bit too. But I think this is, this is Sean Payton's way of saying, you know what, let's do it. Sean Payton has been gutsy in the past, and he's going to be gutsy now. Love is a, a take it or risk it kid, and they're going to risk it all and, and take love. And he's going to wait maybe a year or two behind Drew Brees, but they are planning for the future. And I think they are stupid if they go with Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill is a gadget guy. He, he is not the quarterback of the future. Because I saw something that says Rams punter Johnny Hecker has more career passing yards than Taysom Hill. That just tells you right there that this guy is not for the future. Love will have – one of the best to ever do it to learn from. Yeah, sometimes you just got to risk it for the biscuit, though. Bruce Arians, that's his slogan right there. That is. No risk it, no biscuit. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, I also respect that pick for you, from you. But we're, also, uh, also, I want to I want to add in one more on. thing too. Go ahead. Oh, so um um, the Saints have an interesting vertical passing game. Drew Brees doesn't need to go down the field a whole lot. That's not really their offense because they got really good route runners and tank guard Michael Thomas and now Emmanuel Sanders. Um, if they don't, if they don't go quarterback here, I think they very well might go quarterback in another round. And there was another guy that is not a first round pick, but I could really, really see him benefiting from the Saints offense. Uh, quarterback, that's Jake Fromm from Georgia. Uh, he he doesn't have the best arm strength in terms of everyone in the draft. But the dude was a winner, um, knew, how to, knew how to put the ball in guys' hands when it mattered most. Again, doesn't have the arm strength that most of these guys had. In fact, he was one of the very bottom. But with the Saints' offense, Drew Brees doesn't need to win the ball down the field very much. These guys are great runners. And, again, vertical passing game. Fromm doesn't need to win the ball down that much. So I really see Fromm as a very good fit in the Saints' offense. But, again, I don't think he's a day-one pick. I think the Saints can go there and maybe pick someone up on the defensive side and then maybe go get from maybe I think that'd be a great scenario. But again, I think they love Jordan love possibly. I don't know about that, but I think they might Sean Payton might be, you know what? Let's steal him away. Cause if you let them wait, there's going to be teams that are going to be hovering in that late first round, early second round. They're going to swoop them up. So yeah. interesting stuff. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. The Saints could definitely go a bunch of ways in this draft for sure. And it it just depends on what they want at that certain day. Absolutely. So going on to 25, so in the 2020 NFL virtual draft with the 25th selection, the Minnesota Vikings select Denzel Mims from from Baylor. He's a he's a wide receiver from Baylor. 
He's he has 1,020 yards last season, 12 touchdowns, and uh, he was 66 uh, receptions for a 15.5 average. So honestly, it's pretty good. He's a he's a strong strong wide receiver. He's very athletic. He's very fast, and I believe I believe the Vikings could use some help in that in that area a little a little bit. They're pretty strong there, but just a little bit they could use to help some, like some more powerful and like fast guys. So I believe Denzel Mims will definitely fit well there. Yeah, I had him going to the Vikings at twenty-two, so kind of a flip-flop there. Uh, you had the Vikings go defense at twenty-two. Um, I'm gonna have the Vikings go defense at twenty-five, but a different direction of the defense. I think. With Everson Griffin not coming back, that presents a big hole in the defensive line for Minnesota. I believe they could go cornerback as well, but I think they'll try and do that later in the draft. I think some of these top edge rushers, this is where they're going to shine and go late in the first round. So there's a guy that has been constantly, again, very interesting, increasing on people's draft boards. I'm going to go with the 25th pick. Yeter Gross Matos from Penn State. Uh, really, really great athlete. Really great season last year at Penn State. And he'd be a great fit next to the veteran Daniil Hunter on that Vikings defensive line. Oh, also, Linval Joseph also was the other guy. Linval Joseph is a Los Angeles Charger now. So that's two guys that are not coming back. Everson Griffin is still a free agent. So that's two right there. Uh, but Gross Matos, great athlete. Uh, Mike Zimmer, defensive coach for the Vikings. I I think he still is a defensive coordinator, technically. Uh, this will be a really good pick for them. I think Gross Matos is going to fit really, really well with this Vikings defense if they go there. Yeah. I, I could see him definitely going there. Yeah, definitely for the for on the defensive end. He could definitely be a, huge, a very huge good fit for them right there. Yeah, you want to go? You want me to go? You you go, you gonna go? You you can go. I did I did the last four, so you do the the you do four this time. Okay. Four, four, uh, twenty six. We have the Miami Dolphins. Correct. The third pick. Yeah. The third Dolphins pick. This Dolphins team is gonna go another offensive spot here. Um. And I they they did get someone in free agency. But this position, out of everyone in the league, they had the worst – their depth chart was the worst out of every team in the league in this spot. And despite signing someone in free agency, they're going to pick up another guy, another running back. Yes, I said running back. The first running back will be taken with this pick by the Miami Dolphins. They got Jordan Howard in free agency, but they won't stop there. There's a couple rookies out there that I feel like might get taken – late first round, early second round. I'm going to go with the big star running back from Wisconsin, Jonathan Taylor, at number 26 overall. Obviously, us being in a Big Ten uh, area, we watch, obviously, Big Ten is a lot of the local games we get. Jonathan Taylor is an amazing running back. Uh, pure speed, just acceleration off the charts. Miami is going to love this guy. And I think if Jordan Howard keeps up with the injury history he has, this guy is a really good shot of maybe taking it long term, uh, despite the running back position being so up in the air with contracts and whatnot. I think Miami's going to jump the gun here and pick Taylor. Taylor and two other guys are going to be up there too, but I think scheme-wise it's Taylor is going to be the man that Miami goes with. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that for sure. But for me, 26th pick in the draft, the uh, Miami Dolphins select linebacker from LSU, Patrick Queen. He's a uh, he's six foot, 229 pounds. He's a uh, he's a great great uh, ball mover, and he's also really good on the run. Yeah, he's really good on the run. He's a uh, even though he's like smaller for his size, he could. He he's really mobile. He's speedy. He's uh, athletic. He's uh, explosive, and I believe uh, the Dolphins definitely need need some help at the linebacker position. So 
I believe it will be a good fit for Patrick Queen with the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, interesting enough. Uh, you got linebacker there. One of the big two in the New England Patriots linebacker court, Kyle Van Noy, went to the Dolphins on a big contract. I believe it was four-year, 53 mil. He cashed in, so they got one big linebacker there. I don't know who their other starting linebacker is, but I don't think they're going to go there. I think they're going to still stack up on the on the offense, but good pick uh, nevertheless. Uh, Queen is a great athlete again. I, I will say I do have him going somewhere else in this late first round, but we'll see. But I think with them signing Van Noy, I don't think they're going to go linebacker with that one. That's a good pick. Yeah. Good athlete again. We'll at see. number 20. At number 27, I believe we have the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. I'm correct. This was – this has been the team that everyone is like they're going to totally trade down. Seattle. They I, I really – see that. Seattle has been a team that, that has acquired a lot of people through trades as well. Uh, Jadavion Clowney. And I could really see them going for someone like Yannick Nguake from Jacksonville – or I could see them going for Everson Griffin from the Vikings. I could see them going there. I could see Jacksonville trading, uh, wanting that pick, and then here's Nguake. There you go. You, you've got a Super Bowl contending team right here to replace Clowney uh, right there. But if we're going no trades here, I think the Seahawks, their biggest need is offensive uh, tackle. Uh, and the one guy that stands out that has not been – uh, picked yet Joshua Jones from Houston. I'll I'll have him go there. Solid athlete all around, and they're going to stack up Russell Wilson's uh, offensive line so he could do his little tricks and whatnot and be protected. So I, I'm I'm this is the one pick that I'm strongly convinced they will trade down the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, but if if they don't, that's my pick. Joshua Jones from Houston. Yeah, I believe they'll they'll definitely trade down. But if they don't. Like you said, I believe uh, with the 27th pick, the Seattle Seahawks will go with wide receiver from Clemson, T. Higgins. He's, uh, he's, he's a dangerous player, and he's a, he's a playmaker. He's dangerous. Like, he's a dangerous player, like, everywhere. And he's, he could also be a huge threat in the red zone. He posted uh, 59 receptions for 1,167 yards and 13 touchdowns in 15 games last season. And his, uh, his size and skill set, um, right, I've, I've seen his size and skill set have been compared to Chargers receiver Mike Williams, which is interesting because that, that'll be fun to see, especially if they're being compared like that. It'll be, it'll be fun to see how, how the, uh, he compares to him. So yeah. with, that, with that being said, I believe uh, Seattle will go T. Higgins. That's an interesting pick. Um, I if the Seahawks go there, I do not think he'll be a starter right away. Tyler Lockett is their number one guy, and then Big DK Metcalf is that number two. Uh, he really balled out last year. So the Seahawks, other than that, no one really flashy at the wide receiver position. Although they did get Greg Olson from the Panthers at tight end, so. It's a good acquisition right there. Uh, but I think that will be a solid number three pickup for them at receiver. I still think offensive tackle will be the way that they go. T. Yeah. Higgins is another interesting one. He, his draft stock has taken a little bit of a plunge. But I still think someone will take a chance on him very, very soon. Yeah, um, exactly. See, I yeah. look at a lot of di different directions as well, on, like, a, like some of these teams can in this draft. They can definitely go a lot of ways. If you're being honest, yeah, I I'll be pretty shocked if Seattle doesn't trade down from that pick, though. I'll be honest. Yeah, I will too. Yeah, so at number twenty-eight, we got what the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, yes, yep, yes, sir. All right, woo woo, woo big woo. trust. Time to upgrade on that defense with the twentieth pick. Uh, you you mentioned him a couple picks ago for the Miami Dolphins. I think Patrick Queen will be the pick for the Baltimore Ravens. I was really going back and forth between him and Kenneth Murray for this pick, but since Kenneth Murray's draft stock has risen up so much, I think he's going to be the, the one off the board before Queen. 
Queen's going to fall right into the hands of the Baltimore Ravens here. Uh, bolstering that, the Ravens' defense is looking nasty for next year. They got uh, Derek Wolf. They signed him from the, from the Broncos. They traded for Calais Campbell. Uh, Matthew Judon, they franchise tagged. Not sure if he's going to get traded. Possibility, not too sure. Uh, uh, Earl Thomas is still there. Again, another guy I, I know is an impact playmaker, but I'm not sure. I can't think of his name at this second. But that other linebacker spot is the big need for the, the Ravens here. And like I said, with, with Ken, I had Kenneth Murray going to the Ravens at 28, but his draft stock has taken a huge jump. So I think no, no offense to Patrick Queen, just the, these other teams have had other big needs. Queen is going to fall right into the Ravens' lap here. And with that pick, uh, him and uh, Matthew Judon are the star linebackers here for the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I could, I, could, I could see that for sure. But for me, I'm going to go with the 28th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select. Yeter Gross Matos from Penn State. He's, a, he's an explosive and versatile defender who's a really dangerous, especially breaking up plays, which I think will be huge, especially with with uh, Lamar Jackson being with the Ravens and having him as a defender. It'll definitely he he'll he'll definitely like help like everywhere on the everywhere like on both sides of the ball, especially since he's uh his energy is like really high as well, which is also good and it will definitely definitely help the team boost up whenever they need it, especially if they're losing. They just use that boost of energy to get them to get them up and going for sure. So I believe the Ravens will Go with uh, Yeter Gross Matos from Penn State. Yeah, uh, and, and that again will bolster that defensive line even more. They, like I said, Derek Wolf, Calais Campbell, Matthew Judon as well. Again, there's someone else that I'm forgetting on that defensive line that is a a big playmaker. What is with me and forgetting people's names tonight? I I, I don't know what it is, but. That would be a, the Ravens' defense is going to be nasty next year. They're going to take a big step up. Um, so that's interesting pick. But I think that linebacker spot is going to be where they go. Uh, I'll go. I'll go this one too, and then you could take it from there. Um, Twenty nine. We have the. Oh wait, remind me who is it? Is it the Titans? Uh, Tennessee Titans. Yeah. Titans. This is an interesting one here. Uh, I got a couple different directions where they could go. Defensive line and cornerback are the biggest needs for them. Uh, with them trading Jarrell Casey away, will they go defensive line here and stock up? Or will they go Jadavion Clowney and maybe sign him? Interesting one there. Cornerback is the other uh, one that's open uh, with them kind of basically parting ways with Logan Ryan this offseason. That is another one that is kind of off the list. Man, this is tough. Actually, I'm I'm not sure. I think you you have your pick. You want to go? Yeah, for sure. I'll. I'm I'll, still thinking about it. Yeah. So uh, for the 29th pick in the draft, I believe the Tennessee Titans will go with cornerback from TCU, Jeff Gladney. He's a he's a cornerback, and he's a very versatile, both inside and out. He's uh he's aggressive, and he's he's dangerous when he when he's uh, playing playing the ball. And since uh, since they need a cornerback, I believe Jeff Gladney will be a really good move for Tennessee, especially since they need that position to be strong. So I believe Titans will definitely go with Jeff Gladney from TCU. And I did, I did remember the guy. I have made my decision about the Titans. They are going cornerback. I still think they're going to go for Clowney. Um, they're going to go cornerback, but it's not the same cornerback that you listed. And I feel like, I feel like I might, I feel so sorry for this guy that I'm going to mess up his name, but Utah, J, is it Jalen Johnson or Daryl Johnson? It's from Utah. Uh, Jalen, I believe. I think that's I think that's I'm gonna go opposite again from you. 
Jalen – correct me if I'm wrong, though, Jalen Johnson from Utah will be the pick for the Titans. That's going to be the big replacement for Logan Ryan right there. And, uh, yeah, and not because I think – I would disagree with you, but I think a really good fit for the Titans def- uh, defense, another Patriots former coach, tough physical defender, uh, came out of Utah. So, I got – uh, definitely Johnson, but I think it's Jalen Johnson. Yeah. Like, like, all right. Jalen Johnson is the pick for the Titans. Yeah. So uh, going with uh, number 30 in the draft, we got the Green Bay Packers, and I believe they will select a wide receiver in Jalen Rieger from uh, TCU. Uh, Jalen's, uh, he's very fast. He's a, uh, He's quick, he's tough, and I believe that's just what the Packers are looking for. Packers are always usually tough, hardworking, aggressive, so I believe the Packers definitely fit Jalen Rieger's game. So I believe with the 30th pick in the NFL draft, I believe he'll go to the Packers, Jalen Rieger. Yeah, interesting pick, and I really thought the Packers, Packers wide receiver, that is going to be another interesting one to look out for. They also could be a player for Jordan Love, though, as well. I've heard them thrown out there a little bit. Uh, but wide receiver is another interesting pick for them there. Um, I'll, I did have them picking a receiver in my mock. I have kind of changed my mind for this week. I think if they are going to pick up a receiver, it'll be a little bit later in the draft. Uh, but they did sign Devin Funches from the Indianapolis Colts. That'll be their number two guy. Uh, way uh, better of an upgrade than, I believe it was Geronimo Allison and Marquez Valdez-Scantling. And I think out of the, and, and the, three, yeah, the, three, the three other guys for the receivers or for the Packers were Geronimo Allison, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard was by far the most impactful out of all those guys. I don't think he's number two yet. So signing Funchess really completed that number two thing for them. Lazard can go back in that third row. I don't know what Allison and Valda Scanlings roles will be. So I think they'll go for receiver later in the draft. Uh, I see the Packers going to someone not far from home at all. Another Wisconsin player, and it addresses a big need for them, uh, linebacker Zach Bond from Wisconsin. Uh Tough physical player. Wisconsin has had one of the best defenses in all of college football the last couple of years uh, under defensive coordinator Jim Leonard. So, Bond fits a big need for them. Uh, they lost Blake Martinez in free agency. They did sign Christian Kirksey from the Browns, but they still have an open spot right there, I believe. And Bond, again, Wisconsin, uh, went to college there not too far. I'm sure he'd be just as happy in a, in a nice spot in that Packers starting defense right there. So Kirksey and then Zach Bond will be my pick for the Packers right over here at number 30. That's actually a really good pick too. Thank you. Uh, so uh, going with, the, with pick number 31, we got the San Francisco 49ers, and I believe they'll draft Jalen Johnson, cornerback from Utah. Uh, Johnson, is he's aggressive. He's physical. He's quick. And he, he has that shutdown power where if you if he latches onto you, he's not letting you pass. So I believe that that'll be really good for the 49ers. And uh just to have that lockdown defense and their defense is already pretty good. But I believe with the addition of Jalen Johnson, their defense will go up a notch a notch higher than last season. Yeah, cornerback is another really interesting spot there for the Niners. Uh, Richard Sherman, say what you want. Uh, he is looking like he's in his glory days right now. Uh, not not looking too hot. They got another interesting spot there to fill up, but I think I think they're going to address another need. Um, they traded away DeForest Buckner. They got a spot on that defensive line that's opened up, and there's another big man from TCU that's on the board still that has not been picked up. I got Ross Blacklock falling to the 49ers at 31. Put him next to Eric Armstead, Nick Bosa, uh, Fred Warner there as well, linebacker. Niners have got a revamped defense again. Look at that. They stocked up on another big man right there. So I got 
Ross Blacklock to, to, the, to the 49ers at 31. Interesting pick, though. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting pick, but I think it can definitely work out huge for the 49ers if everything works out well. Yeah, you want to go uh, last one, or you got I'll, one else? I'll actually give, you, give that to uh, you. You started it, you end it, and I'm curious to see who you're going to pick for number 32. All right. Oh, also, I will say, I've also heard the 49ers are no, – I will not be surprised if they trade down from that, that pick, too, to gain more picks later. So, don't be shocked if San Francisco trades that second pick of theirs. Uh, the Chiefs, the Super Bowl champs at number 32. In my mock draft, I had them taking a running back. Uh, but I don't think that'll be the case right here. I think they're going to evaluate what Damian Williams has this year. Uh, and honestly, possibly, Leonard Fournette, Trey talks have been heating up. I think the Chiefs are going to be a player for him as well. Uh, so we'll see. Williams is a good catching guy. Fournette could be the guy that does it all if they trade for him. Like I said, I don't think the Chiefs will go running back here. I think the Chiefs will protect the best quarterback in the game to the extent I think they're going to go offensive line here and center position on top of it. The other center that I've not mentioned other than Cesar Ruiz, uh, that's st- it's still left on my board too, Ruiz, but I think they're going to go instead of Ruiz, Lloyd Cushenberry from LSU. Uh, really, really good center again last year. Uh, great year under Ed Orgerin. And again, this is, this is going to be the next step protecting Mahomes uh, they're going to have to do that and, and stock up on that. But I think running back, they're, they're going to be a player for Fournette, and they're going to evaluate what Williams has. But I think offensive line is the goal here. Center Lloyd Cushenberry. Yeah, I, that, that's an interesting pick. But it, it could work out for them as well. So for me, uh, with the 30, 32nd pick in the draft, the Kansas City Chiefs, will select safety from LSU, Grant Delpit. Mm. So Grant Delpit, he's, uh, he's really fast. He's quick. He has that lightning explosiveness. And uh, he, he's, big, he's, he's a big body as well, which will definitely help him in the, in the long run and definitely for, for protecting Patrick Mahomes. That's, that's going to be huge for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, interesting pick again. Uh, put him in the secondary with the Honey Badger, Tyran Matthew. KC's getting that defense revamped. They are. At this point, it's really about protecting Patrick Mahomes, I believe. Yeah. I think, though, that's – I think Cushenberry, that's – I think, like I said, I, I, I'm, that's where I'm going. Ruiz yeah. is another great center, but I think – He'll, he'll fall a little bit more into the second round in day two. Yeah, for sure. So with the 32nd pick, I'm going to have to go Grant Delpit from LSU. So that will conclude the first round of our NFL mock draft. So what are your thoughts on it? That was fun. Ooh, uh, nice. Not – again – I wasn't expecting us to be like, oh, like picking, like, oh, I thought we were just going to be like, oh, what are they going to need, you know, and discuss it. I, it turned into a kind of like our basically a mock draft, which I thought was awesome. Like, oh, man, this is where, this is where it's going. I, I, I love that. Um, but this was really, really fun. Um, getting all these thoughts out, it, 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 honestly, it's so refreshing and so cool because, like I said, I've, I've done more research on the NFL draft and reading mock drafts that I've ever done in my life this year um not just because quarantine but just because I've I'm getting more and more into it and I and my knowledge for the game and and inside analysis is is growing so much so this is super fun for me to to talk about and hear other people's perspectives because the NFL draft like I said there are smokescreen stories all over the place there could be god knows what happens so it's really interesting to kind of pick and see, you know, where other people can go. Oh, maybe they need here. Oh, maybe they'll, they'll address something here. I love doing it. Yeah, it was definitely definitely fun for sure. I know you were texting me a lot earlier. We were both texting each other earlier today, and you couldn't wait for this to be to happen. I couldn't wait. 
That's that right. And it showed, and it was it was a lot of fun. Like it's interesting hearing everyone's perspective, especially yours, and especially my own when I actually like get out there. And we we had some similarities in the draft, but we also had some huge differences. But overall, it was it was fun. It was productive. It's a uh, it's a football football draft stream. Absolutely. Uh, and again, so much high praise to this draft class. I feel like this is going to be the the talent off this off of these guys is off the charts. And I can't wait to see what what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to get some. I feel like, we're, and this is this is a no trade one. We're going to get some trades, and it's going to be interesting. Teams can go in another direction where you may not even think they'll go. Exactly. This this draft class is impressive. Just it's just flat out impressive. There's so much talent in this class, and I honestly can't wait to see what they're going to do in the NFL. Retweet. Yeah. So, uh, any concluding thoughts that you want to uh, put out there? Oh. I'm- other than that, no, just, again, I can't wait for this all to shake down. Analyzing with you, Jack, has been amazing yet again. Uh, really glad to hear all your thoughts. And, again, I can't wait to see how this shakes down. cannot wait for Thursday. I will be watching from my couch. That is, a like, a definite. It's happening. First round. Yeah, for sure. We should maybe do, like, an Instagram Live, like, on the, on the spot uh, Instagram, by, like, re- real in life. Uh, reactions, something to ponder about. That's that's gonna be like the first ever maybe IG live for on the spot sports. That'd be really cool. Yeah, and we can get both of us on there. You just like do like live reactions or something like that. Just a thought. Oh yeah, like joint. Yeah, yeah that might be interesting. We'll definitely have to plan that out. Yeah, we'll gather more details for sure. Yeah, for sure, and then we'll let you guys know. But what a way to end episode 40. Um, we have tons more content coming. We have literally like five or six interviews incoming in the next few weeks. So we'll definitely get get uh, great get great content out for you guys, especially in this quarantine. And especially after, we'll definitely keep improving. And I believe that that's it for now. But wait. Hold on, I, I just thought of something. Episode 50 will be coming up in 10 episodes, and with all these interviews, it'll go by really quick. So who is an episode 50 guest that you all would want to see or have us try to get on? Because episode 50 is going to be a blast. It's going to be a fun one. I can already tell. So yeah, just, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Yeah, so just leave it. Just, well, thank you. Yeah, just DM us on Instagram at on the spot sports at on underscore the underscore spot underscore sports on the spot sports with underscores between each word. DM us who you think we should get and follow us on there. And we really appreciate all your guys' support. So thank you guys for listening to this episode and we'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace out.